rejoicing in the Lord. We're going to celebrate this day, and we hope that you will stay tuned. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask you, Lord, to touch the people right where they are. We thank you, Lord, for the Fireplace Fellowship. We thank you, Lord, that you have raised us up for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We decree that this generation shall be saved in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for household salvation. We thank you, Lord, for lives being touched on this day. In Jesus' name, stay tuned. Brother Paul, sing it one more time. One, two, three. the piano with us today and then Pastor Jana Henson. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here Amen. on this beautiful Sunday 7th morning. of July, Seven. but we're celebrating our independence. Yes. Well, what are we independent for? We have freedom God. of religion. Amen. Independence. Worship God freely. Yeah, to Hallelujah. Worship God. Thank How you, Jesus. We want to worship, and nobody can tell us any other That's way. That's right. They sure can. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands who died for that right. That's right. For us. Amen. I have a scripture I'd like to read for Amen. you today. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name right. humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear Hallelujah. from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Amen. That's what we're believing God for, Amen. healing in our land. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Quickly, uh, we're going to come back to them, but this is John and Jenica Alden. They serve in about 100 ways at the Fireplace Fellowship. But I want to touch on, he went to Iraq, right? Seven times, y'all. Seven times. He is a veteran. He's a hero right here on the stage. So we're thankful for him and everyone who serves, amen, and has served. And then we have our Now Gen students. So Now Gen is not over with generation. And at the Fireplace Fellowship, we believe that we're raising up men and women, young men and women, to preach the gospel. There is a great myth and that is that this generation is going to hell. But no, it is not. Amen. We're doing our part of the fireplace. We're seeing our sons and daughters safe. So I'm going to ask my daughter. Where's my daughter? Hannah Tripp back here. Can you wave or say hi? or <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so Miss Hannah, take it away and introduce uh, who you have with us. And they're going to give us some testimonies this morning. And we're going to rejoice because we see what God's doing in their life. Amen. So right here, I have Mr. Joseph Ramos with me. I have Miss J.C. Pauls, and I have Lawson Tripp. So we just got back from our Now Gen retreat. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who gave, everyone who donated, everyone who made it possible for us to go on this retreat. It would not have been possible without y'all, so I thank you. Great things happened on this retreat. And of course, when you set aside time for God, right. he moves and he sets aside Amen. time for Hallelujah. you. Amen. And so Hallelujah. on this retreat, we dug deeper into how to hear God's voice, how to even set aside time for God in the craziness of life. Sometimes it's like, how do I do this? Where do I start? So we did that. So I have a couple of testimonies and a couple of scriptures from these young adults who are going to share from our retreat. We'll start with Mr. Lawson. Well, hello. Hi. It is, it is I, Lawson Trip. I went on the Now Gen retreat. If I had to give a testimony about it, uh, I, I'd, I'd want to highlight uh, something that I think doesn't normally get highlighted in, in something like this. The Now Gen class is great. Uh, the, 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 te the, the leadership teaching, all, all of that stuff. But what it truly does for a lot of us is it brings us together. Right. Uh, and not, that might sound a, 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 little, a little goofy, but I mean, it, tr it does, it brings uh, the kids in the class all together. And that's what this retreat did. Uh, if you remove 
all of the leadership teaching, all of the biblical teaching from it. Uh, what people left with is an experience uh, that they had with each other. Uh, and that's something that... Amen. That's something that uh, in, in a, a, modern, a modern world, young people don't tend to have as much, uh, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of people, uh, I, I think we're all working to get better at it, but as of right now, it's, it's, it's a commodity to find. Uh, and that's something that, that this, this Nowgen class offers uh, in, in spades. So. Isolation is the enemy's playground. So when you can get a bunch of young adults together who are on fire for God, there's a shift that takes place. So that's why it's, it's so important, even for adults, of course, that's why it's so important to be involved in church. I mean, can't we tell how old Lawson is? Lawson, how old are you? Uh, I am 19 years old. And is it true or not true that you're actually wearing a flannel shirt in July? <laughs> It is true that the weather and others in this room do not control what I wear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, we'll be sure and tell us the ages of who else we have speaking. Okay, up next is Miss J.C. Pauls. She is 19. She joined, she is one of the original members of Now Jen. As soon as she said she was going to stay committed as soon as she joined, she has stayed committed. So she's been here for a year and a half so far, and you're going to be here forever. So anyways, <laughs> right, exactly. so this is Miss Jay-Z. Well, you're always going to hear about our retreat because of kind of how amazing it was, you know, getting to connect with all your friends and at this point, basically family from how much we all talk to each other and love each other. But it's kind of more also about Naujin, you know. Naujin not only brings us closer to the Lord and helps us follow Him, but, you know, you're not feeling alone as you're following Him. You have all of us to join in with you. So, you know, your questions, your doubts easily can be answered by one of us here. So it's definitely a nice big family that you should join in. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> So on this retreat, we also did some mini sermonettes. So they kind of learn how to structure a sermon. I, our, let me say, they structured their testimony. I believe that not everyone's called to pastor, but we're all called to share our testimony. So within that, they also kind of did do some mini sermonettes. And so this is Mr. Joseph. He's 22. So he will be sharing today what he shared with us on the retreat. All right. Well, good morning. Happy 4th of July. Uh, um, well, on the retreat, when we were there, they let us have a quiet time and just sit back and see what the Lord spoke to us when they let us have our quiet time. They played the music really softly, had us worship the Lord. I set myself outside, um, and I was just waiting for the Lord to speak to me. And immediately, when he spoke to me, I opened up my book to Proverbs. Uh, Caden, the entire retreat was talking about how we need to listen to the Lord and when we do listen to the Lord to make sure we respond in the appropriate way. Um, please, thank you. So when I opened my book up to Proverbs, uh, I found this text called Window, w w uh, excuse me, Wisdom Shouts in the Streets. Um, so I'm gonna read Proverbs 1, 20 through 25. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. She calls to the crowds along the main street, to those gathered in front of the city gate. How long, you simpletons, will you insist on being simple-minded? How long will you mockers relish your mocking? How long will you fools hate knowledge? Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. I called you so often, but you wouldn't come. I reached out to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. So that resonated with me because, again, Kate and Hannah, the leaders on the retreat, they were talking about actually listening to the Lord and making sure that when we heard, we 
we followed with action and we made sure that we actually did what the Lord said because when the Lord speaks to us we have two options we can turn our back on him or we can follow through with what he says and from there we're offered grace and love through our Lord God and just thank you Jesus for everything that he's done for us um, and then right here I'm gonna read 26 through 33 it says, So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you when disaster overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster engulfs you like a cyclone, and anguish and distress overwhelm you. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way choking on their own schemes for simpletons turn away from me to death fools are destroyed by their own complacency but all who listen to me will live in peace untroubled by fear of harm Amen. so just following through with that first part again just you know listening to the lord and understanding that when the lord speaks to us when we do listen to him there is peace there is calm at the end of that when we follow through and we do exactly what he asks of us Amen. then we are ultimately living the best way that we possibly can Amen. and on the opposite end of that is destruction and pretty much death That's right. if you listen to the Lord and he tells you to do something and you turn your back the other way it's it's hard to say but he looks at that and he, he's disappointed so when he sees that He's almost, he's hurt by the things that you're doing. So with that, I just want to say I encourage all youth and everyone in this certain age group, just when the Lord speaks to you or when there's advice given to you by an elder, take that advice and do what the Lord asks of you because there are many blessings along the way. Thank you. I want you to be encouraged when you hear these young adults talk because these aren't just some young adults out in another universe. These are our young adults here and I want you to picture your youth, your young adult, because they're coming home. These, these young adults, all of us that you see, we're someone's seed. And, and it might have been your grandparents, might have been your great grandparents, but that's why it matters where you sow, that's why it matters where you give, because a harvest will come from that. So how you can get involved, now Jen is a leadership program for ages 18 to 25. Of course, the Lord is always intertwined in there, but this is based out of John Maxwell's program. So you can reach out to me, you can reach out to the Fireplace Fellowship page to get involved. We would love to have you. We meet every other Sunday night. Amen. And when does your next round of uh, leadership classes start? August 4th is our open house, but you don't have to commit that night. You can just come and see and check it out if you like us. If you don't, you never have to see us again. But we start in August, and we would love to have you. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you give a big round of applause? I'm so proud of all of them. Amen. Are they doing great? Pastor Janet, would you just lead us in a prayer? Maybe you're watching online and you have a young adult that you're believing God for. Well, this is proof. These kids were not all raised in church. They were not all even a year ago, year and a half ago. Even the ones that were raised in church have grown significantly. So there's hope for whatever your situation is. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for every one of our young adults yes, and Lord. our youth our children, even our nursery kids. We thank you that they are a gift from you to us. We thank you that we have taken the responsibility yes. of raising them seriously. Lord, we thank you that Hannah had a vision. Yes. And in that vision, lives have been changed. And these young people are growing so much in the Lord and in your word, God. We thank you for it. I ask, Lord, that that the parents that are listening today, that they take heart knowing that all their prayers will be answered, that they have not prayed in vain, but that their children will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and follow him in ministry and in spirit and in truth. 
And I thank you for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Give us, give it now, Jen, one more big God bless you. Thank y'all. Brother Paul, take it away. Uh, if you're just tuning in, this is the Fireplace Fellowship Sunday morning, July 7th service. Would you do us a favor and hit the share button? Hit the like button. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. We're so glad that you have tuned in. And this, I promise you, you stay connected. You will be blessed. Amen. Take it away, Brother Paul. serve a God like that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A God who poured out so much for us. Lord, we're open this Sunday. Would you just pour out to us? We're in receiving mode right now, Father. 
We open our hearts, we open our eyes and our ears to everything that you have for us today, Lord. This Sabbath, we rest in you, Father. We rest in you, Lord. Just pour out to us. Thank you, Jesus. Just to sit in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour
Lord, we come. Hallelujah, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. To say how great. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I feel Jesus in this house. How about y'all? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, to be in the presence. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just dwell here with us, Lord. Just shower us, Lord, with your mercy and your love and your protection tonight. Hallelujah. Just draw us, Lord. Just put your arms around us, Lord. Just hold us. Draw us near, Lord. Draw us, Lord. Hallelujah. Draw me close to you. Yes, Lord. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say. This is our Sunday morning, July 7th service. We're online only. We're doing it a little bit different this morning, but it's wonderful. Amen. We got an amen corner here. We got the A team on the stage this morning. Amen. How about Brother Paul? He's always a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We'd appreciate it if you like what you're watching. Just type in where you're watching from, and if you really like it, you can hit the share button. We would love to connect with you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to pray for your family. We believe strongly that this generation shall be saved. The Lord has raised up the Fireplace Fellowship for such a time as this. We believe this is, this is the time for the church to shine in America. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're shining. Amen. This morning we have John and Jenica with us and Pastor Jana. John and Jenica direct our young, uh, no, not our young adults. They seem like young adults to me, just to be honest. I guess they're a little bit older than that. <laughs> Jenica babysat my daughter, Hannah, when you were 12? 12 or 13. Please don't call the... 12 or 13. <laughs> child services on me that I let too young a child babysat my child. But anyways, it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. I was a anyway. great 
she was in she was a great right? babysitter. Yes. Um, so I've been knowing Jenica a long time. You were at the very first service of the fireplace. You also babysit for the home groups that we had. There were the ladies' tea parties back in the day. So she's been around for yes. a long time. And then she married her good-looking hunk of a man who's on his cell phone right now. I'm sure you're sharing the broadcast, right? That's what you're doing. <laughs> scripture, 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 scripture. So John Alden and Jenica, they serve in the youth department. Hallelujah. But this morning, I asked y'all to share some testimonies regarding giving. You've had some doozies over the years, meaning amazing testimonies. And what I love about John and Jenica is, kind of like Joseph shared earlier, just believe it. Just yeah. re- If the word says give, if, right? Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And that's what I've seen out of John specifically because he had not been to our church because they got married. And um, so that's when he came in on the scene. And I think it was over on Water Street, right? Yeah. So y'all can take it away. You can share um, some testimonies about giving, but we're glad to have you. Okay, uh, I want to start with the uh, verse first, and um, I want to start with Luke 6, and uh, usually you'll see uh, Luke 6, 38 with giving, uh, because it just uh, sounds, or it goes in good with it, yes. uh, but I want to start with uh, 37, and it's, uh, do not judge, and you will not be judged, do not condemn, and you will not be condemned, forgive, and you will be forgiven, give, and it will be given unto you, good measure, Pressed down, shaken together, running over. We pour it onto your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be you. It will be measured to you. Right. I just feel like that entire verse um, is more pertinent than just using the the sound good. Yeah. You know, giving it to you, and you, or uh, you giving yeah. it's given unto you. Yeah. Um, so, our little testimony for uh, for giving uh, back in 2009, uh, end of February, I got out of the army, and uh, without much of a plan, <laughs> and. Uh, so I was on unemployment, trying to find a job. No one wanted to hire a uh, combat veteran at that time. Um, this seemed like. And uh, so we were in Clarksville. We moved back down to Hendersonville. And we started going to church. Um, and I started training for this job to go overseas. And uh, the, the length of time it took to uh, start the end process was, it could be six months to a year of just processing. Because um, there's so much to do, I had to get a security clearance, all this stuff. And uh, so I went, ended up going to training, and uh, for I think it was 30 days in uh, Louisiana. And I came back, and uh, the pay was not that great for the training. I think it was like you know 30 or 40 dollars a day or something like that. And uh, so we finally got that check, uh, and uh, we were waiting on a um, a letter from Department of State for me to get my clearance. And uh, I had just been told that the wait time was about like three months. And uh, and so my unemployment was about to run out and we just needed, you know, we needed a miracle. And how many kids did you have at this time? We just had Houston one. at this time. Just one, yeah. okay, so that's how far back we, we are. Our, okay. our family's grown a little bit since then. <laughs> 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Um, so I just felt it when I was in church, um, God just really challenged me to give that entire check that I had just gotten, which was, I think was, I think it was a couple thousand dollars. I can't remember the exact amount. So I just told her, I was like, I need to get this whole check. And she said, okay. And um, so we uh, we gave it. And That I was think, a Wednesday night. I remember. Yep. And that was a Wednesday night. I think it was before, I think it was uh, the next day or the day after, I would gotten a phone call. And I said, I don't know how uh, you got pushed to the front of the line, but your letter came through and um, you'll have your security clearance and you can pretty much deploy in the next two weeks. And that job changed everything for y'all, didn't it? Because it was good employment, and that was a miracle. And I love, in my opinion, you probably don't feel this way, I don't know, but I think they were young in the Lord, and they just heard the word of the Lord, and they just obeyed it, and God made a way for them. Well, especially for John, you know, I had been raised in church, so it was what I, everything that I knew, just like I knew my own name, this is what you do, and God is faithful. But John was a baby Christian, and he was, um, just, you know, learning to even just trust that the Bible was real. Right. And so him just um, being in service and feeling the presence of God and listening to God's direction. And that set y'all on a course of obeying exactly. God's word regarding finances. And don't you have, oh yeah, will you tell the other one when we were at TBN 
and uh, you gave again. That was a big one that time. Yeah, so when, when we're asked to share uh, giving testimonies, we're yeah. like, which one? There's yeah, been so, so many. many. Um, because God is so faithful. Yes. Um, so we moved a few times after Water Street. How many babies at this point? Three? So, um, yeah, I believe Bo was yeah. either Ella or Bo. Yeah. So two or three kids later <laughs> at TBN. Yeah. And we, as a church, were believing for um, the to buy Walton Ferry. Ferry. So buy Walton Ferry. Yes, and we needed a miracle. Yes. yes. And we had set aside $10,000 for John to be able to come home from that contracting job. Mm-hmm. Yep. And start a business. That's and right. he had come up with that amount that this is what I, w- I would need and to get the equipment and the course that he needed for a hydrographics business. And I'm sitting in service, and this is where I'm alone. That's right. He's yeah. in Iraq, and yeah. I'm, it was Bo, because I remember yeah. trudging the car seat with my other two kids through yeah. the parking lot <laughs> yep. uh, That's uh, right. TVN. No regrets, though, huh? No, absolutely <laughs> not. And so... I am in service, and I hear God, and I may have not been in service after service, but sometime around there, I hear the Lord tell me that we need to give that $10,000. Oh, yes. And I sat on it for a few days because I'm like, oh, Lord, John yeah. is, is going to think I'm crazy. That's yeah. everything that we yeah. have to come home. Yeah. And so I just decided I was going to be obedient, and I told John, and he said, okay. If that's what the Lord said. And so we did. And I'll let you, because you remember the details better, pick up after we gave. Yep. So after, that was, um, I think it was September time frame and, uh, of 2013. Yep. And uh, so I ended up coming home at the end of January 2014. And um, I came home a little early because of a back injury. And that's a whole other testimony. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> And um, so I had been battling with the IRS about getting um, some back pay for uh, too much taxes they took out, you know, go figure, a couple years prior. I think it was from 2009, actually. And uh, it was just like this ongoing process that was going on for years. And in, uh, I think it was February or March, um, I got a letter from my CPA saying, oh, yeah, you're going to get $7,000. I'm like, well, that's, that's better than nothing. Yeah. And... Uh, and out of nowhere, uh, we actually got back seventeen thousand wow. dollars. So yeah. they are gave me <laughs> yeah. more than what they were said yeah. they were gonna give me. And that doesn't happen with the IRS. Yeah, so that doesn't happen with the government. Yeah. Not for us at least. Um, and that's exact. Actually, that was exactly what I needed to start a business cash free or wow. in cash without getting any loans or anything. And that's it turned out the ten thousand wouldn't have been enough. There you it go. It wouldn't have been enough. So Isn't if we had held something? on to that, we would have been short. But God knew. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. Yes. And I just want to say that not only our faithfulness and God's faithfulness, but it's in sowing in good ground. Amen. You know, we we saw that when you know we were we're here 15 years ago, and um, God being able to speak to us and being able to hear His voice and learning to hear His voice from uh, you and Pastor Rob, Amen. and that's been invaluable in our walk. And being amen. obedient to his direction. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Yes, give the Lord a hand. Amen. Well, it's time to give. And who wouldn't, I mean, makes you want to give like <laughs> Everything 10 you got, yeah. Wait a minute, how much do I have? You know, but I'm so thankful. We do have a guideline. We have a tithe and we have offering. So you'll see on your screen all the ways that there are to give. There's Venmo. There is actually, you can checks in the mail. Yeah. And there is online giving and there's a text to give. I know you see the number, but I'll say the number. It is 615-551-4888. So you can just text the amount you want to give to that number. And then if it's your first time, it'll take you through some prompts and then you're done. If you've given before, then you're done right there. And it will say, thank you for your giving. And we thank you for your giving here at the fireplace. We thank you so much. And we love you and thank you for thinking of us today. Amen. 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 I have learned in regards to what John Jenkins said, 
when I feel God dealing with me about a seed, he always has a harvest in mind. I learned that from Mike Murdoch years ago, but it's the truth. He's not going to deal with you about something if he, because God's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. Amen. And I just think that was a wonderful example of uh, that. And God did exactly that. He got something to you. And frankly, if truth be known over and over and over and over again, we cannot outgive God. And we are sitting here, the young adults that we've seen uh, testify today, it's because of the faithfulness of the givers at the Fireplace Fellowship. We're a group of people who's not giving up. I wanted to just take a couple minutes and talk to, you got you a microphone? Miss Jacqueline, we're right here, we got you one. Jacqueline uh, is, honestly, she is amazing. She's smart. She's, uh, she knows how to work my cell phone better than I do. <laughs> She's my personal computer tech, so I, I'm, I'm spoiled. Um, but Jacqueline is, serves as a church administrator and over the children's ministry, which breaks a lot of the rules in church work, but when she's so good at everything. So um, tell us about what we have coming up. We have a character dinner, Noah's Ark Night, on the 17th. Yes, on the 17th with the petting zoo. Right here at 1616 Long Hollow Pike, and it's all free this year. Yes, it is. All free. So the Noah's Ark Night is going to be uh, animals. Right? Yes, it's all going to be pet like animals. Well, you can come looking like zoo. Noah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we'll have a petting zoo here, and we might have some ponies to ride. We're still working on that one. We're still but we definitely on that. do. We know what animals we have. There's twelve different animals. Twelve sure. different like animals. Okay. But it is not bring your own animal night. No. It is not that. So we'll do a Noah's Ark night on the seventeenth, and then tell us about VBS, and tell us about Awana as well. Um, VBS is coming up this year. We are super excited. Um, this year's theme is victory, so it is like a pep rally theme, and it's we have victory Amen. with Jesus. Amen. So it's going to go over things like courage, obedience, faithfulness, and unity, and then just talks at the very end about Jesus and everything. So oh, it's a, yeah. such an amazing program that is coming up this VBS. And it is July 23rd through the 26th. It Amen. is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We furnish your children lunch. There is no cost to you unless you want to get them a BBS shirt, which is 10 bucks. Um, you can sign up online. You can go to our website at www.thefireplacefellowship.com. And you can go to our calendar and click on the BBS link and sign your children up now so that we can get them all squared away and in their proper groups. Yes. And we are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be outside. We're going to have water activities. So <laughs> make sure that they wear a dress appropriately. Water. <laughs> and, then, and then we end the uh, BBS with a back to school bash. Yes, the very last day. For everyone. Day. And the very what last is that? The 26th. 26th. Okay. And it's on the very last day. It'll be at 2.30. Um, it will follow immediately after VBS. Our VBS children will go first. And then the community gets to come in. It is free to everyone. And yes. it's supplies. We know that the schools around in Sumner County furnish like crayons and glue and things like that. So we are filling in the gap with the Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, tissues, backpack shoes, things like that. Yes. And the Pona if, ice truck will be here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. At the Back to School Bash. I wish they'd come right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, uh, A, we could use volunteers for Absolutely. probably all of it, but we could use your help donating to the Back to School Bash, backpacks, tennis shoes, the Clorox wipes, the hand sanitizer, all that stuff. And then um, what else do we need? Food for the uh, Noah's Ark night, yes, maybe? But, um, we have food for the Noah's Ark night. I think um, we were doing the uh, hot dogs, hot aren't dogs we? and nachos, yeah. Is hot dogs really appropriate on Noah's Ark night when you're talking about animals? <laughs> <laughs> what animals in that hot dog? We're having a salad. <laughs> Anyways, so we got a lot going on. We want you to get involved. It's all free, and we want to be a blessing to you and your family. We want to be a blessing to your children. We see it as our greatest asset in America is our children. And at the Fireplace Fellowship, we see the value of our children. I don't believe that the children should be the lowest budgeted area, the lowest volunteer area. It should be the highest. Because if we lose this generation, we've lost America. And so we are focusing on children, but we need your help. So pray about how you can get involved. Uh, if you're in another state, you may just have to donate. But if you're
you're in this area and you'd like to um, help us in one way or another, we would love for you to help us. So anything else we need to say about all that? Oh, Awana. So this fall, we will start back the Awana program. And what is the Awana program? Awana is a discipleship program geared towards children ages preschool to fifth grade. So they start out, they learn scriptures, they learn how to apply the word of God to their lives, and they earn badges. They earn badges and medals. She's crying over here. That's what that is, if you're wondering. This is such an amazing (laughs) program because I have seen kids come in here and and not know the story of Noah's Ark and not know who um, Adam and Eve are. And I have watched these children flourish and grow in the word of God that they were changing their family Amen. so Amen. it's an amazing program to get involved in and even to just sponsor a child to yes. go through it Amen. you don't have to have children to sponsor them it's $35 a year for a them year, to go a dollar and a week that's for 10 months so yeah. it's during the school time so that way the summertime you can go on vacation and do all that stuff and yeah. they're not going to miss out on anything amen and when will that start back august august 11th august 11th so that's definitely something and all that information is on our website as well yes it is yes we're one of the few churches around here that do the awana program i think there's only three of us that do it so we're excited about that we want to help you with your children we want to help you raise them in the ways of the lord disciple them and it'll stay with them all their entire life right Amen. All right. Well, um, we're going to turn back to Brother Paul. I think he's going to sing something patriotic. I think. Yeah, I'll sing something patriotic. Um, many of you don't know this, but, uh, but years and years ago, um, I was a music director for a church in Virginia Beach. And, and this church was, was just uh, literally, it was surrounded by military bases. They, they were just... You just throw a rock and you'd hit one. I mean, you'd get in trouble for it, but you could do it. And uh, we were right down the road from Little Creek Amphibious Base, and uh, I, there were a number of church members that, you know, that worked there and worked on all the bases, and I had a lot of friends that worked there. Um, and I remember the day that I got word that one of our sailors, he was just one of our church members, but he was a dad and he was a husband. I got word that he wasn't going to make it home. And he wasn't going to make it home because he was off protecting the wonderful thing that we get to do today. Just gathering in the name of our Lord. What an awesome, amazing freedom that is. That some very brave men and women have protected that freedom for us. What greater love. That's the kind of love that Christ showed us. Amen. Amen. So I I wrote a song for my church at the time. And it's the song that ended up bringing me to Nashville. And it's funny, it's the, it means it's the song that brought me here today. Oh yeah, we like it already. Lucky He sips the sweet September air and fights the tears back. They call his dad a hero, but that don't bring him back. He's got to be strong for his mama and sing Amazing Grace. But there's determination written on his face. Old glory crossed the casket, says a thousand words. But stand tall, Billy. We're the only ones he heard In the stillness of that morning The saluting of the guns He is proud to be called his father's son But when he heard the words Be seated from the preacher man He said, if you don't mind, sir I think I'll stand I'll stand For the ones who went before I'll stand For those who took the fall I'll stand For the heroes Who answered the call For the brave ones Who gave it their all I'll 
lived through that. Isn't that something? Aren't you thankful? Will you give John a big hand? We're so thankful. All of our veterans watching, we give you honor. We're so, so thankful. My goodness. And Paul Secord, what a writer. How about that? You wrote that. Yeah. You didn't rip it off anybody. No, no. That, <laughs> that's the song that brought me here and uh, Ray Stevens published it. Wow. And that's what brought me to town. Wow. Look how blessed we are at the fireplace. Praise the Lord. Well, that is a great... Um, segue into what I wanted to pray for, and I just want John and Jenica to talk about, we're going to talk about youth for just one more minute before we go today. But I felt the Lord, as I was thinking the Lord about this morning's service, emotional wounds, <laughs> war, death of a parent, uh, divorce. We have a lot, with social media now, especially y'all, we have cancel culture. Does anyone know what that is? Your family don't like you? <laughs> Delete, block, right? And people will just, uh, used to, before social media, maybe you don't like somebody, maybe you have a problem with them, you see them at Walmart, you still say hi, right? <laughs> it's still like, not as big a deal, but now, oh, if they offend you or say something wrong or, uh, you know, didn't do it the way that they want you to do it, well, how dare you? And now you get canceled, you get blocked, you get um, shunned, you get blasted on social media. My personal favorite, when people uh, rip you apart to shreds, uh, put all their grievances online. Y'all, anyone? Am I the only one? Well, that creates wounds in our souls, folks. <laughs> creates wounds. And uh, Isaiah 54, he was wounded, is 53, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Let me just pause right there. If you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, on that cross, he took your sins. He took everything, your shame, he took it on the cross. Hallelujah. You can be saved right now just by asking Jesus to come into your heart. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Ask the Lord to forgive you for your sin. Tell him that you believe that Jesus is Lord. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. Peace is peace of mind, right? It also says that he bore our griefs and our sorrows. Well, griefs and sorrows, Pastor Janet, that is not a tangible thing, but yet it's probably the most tangible thing that we've ever been through, right? 
He took our, that is emotional pain. If I asked Jenica, because she's had five kids. We alluded to it. I know some of y'all are guessing and talking about yourself. How many kids do these people have? They have five. <laughs> if I asked Jenica to tell us what the pain of childbirth was like, she couldn't tell us. You can't remember. I'm just telling you, scientifically, you cannot remember the pain. We all know that because we wouldn't have another kid, right? That, <laughs> there's the proof of that. But you're, if you're in a car wreck, if you broke your leg, you cannot remember the physical pain of that event. But you can remember the moment that your wa wife walked out the door on you and what you felt like. You can remember when the uh, medic pronounced your spouse dead. You can remember exactly what you felt like. Why? Because your brain will take you right back to that moment and you will feel every pain that you felt as if it was happening again. We can't do it physically, but we can do it emotionally. Isn't that amazing that our brains do that to us? So that's why you can stay stuck in your grief and in your sorrow. And your sister don't like you. And your brother hates you. And these people are talking about you. And these people uh, said awful things about you on social media. And what is that? It is emotional pain. And the enemy will keep you in that cycle over and over and over. But here's the good news. On the cross, he included that. He took our sin. He took our healing hallelujah our physical healing by his stripes we are healed but he paused and included our griefs and our sorrows because he knew it would be too heavy for us to carry we couldn't carry it so he took it upon the cross then let me just take it a little bit further we took a whole what eight weeks and we went over this book right here pigs in the parlor amen saints anyone in the room that went with and this is about demonic spirits that we allow and we cohabitate with in our lives and in our homes. Well, one of the biggest takeaways that I got, you know, I thought I knew it because you think you know everything, right? Because you know everything about the Bible. That's a joke. All right. <laughs> but spirits, I'm talking about demonic spirits, enter through wounds. Through wounds. So that's where your church hurt comes in. You get offended at a preacher, at a pastor, at the piano player, at the director of whatever, right? You look at them funny and they get mad. You know, oh, they shouldn't have or whatever. So now you're walking around wounded and that is the perfect place for the enemy to set up residence in your life and in your heart. So now here comes the depression and the oppression, suicidal thoughts, isolation. Isolation is the devil's playground. We know that. So you have this wound. So what do we got to do? We got to deal with our wounds. You got to deal with your wounds. You got to recognize what you're dealing with. You were wounded when you, uh, it could be childhood calamity. Things could have happened to you that should have never happened to a child. But you got to be honest about what you've dealt with and ask Jesus to help you and to heal you. Amen. And he took it on the cross. Then back to the original um, example of family issues, friendship issues. You say something they don't like. You do something they don't like. They cancel you. And what is it? You are rejected. And then in that rejection, then here will come a spirit. The devil's, I'm telling you, he's all, he's going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we've got to be healed and we've got to be whole in Jesus' name. And so I just want to agree with you on this Sunday morning. I want you to be healed, body, soul, and spirit. I want you to be saved and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. I want you to be healed in your physical body. Last Sunday, y'all, we had somebody, I hadn't even told you this. We had someone, someone June 30th, Sunday morning, healed of um, arthritis. They could not walk straight during the worship service. They felt healing hit their ankles and hit their hips, and they were able to walk straight, and they have not walked straight in years. In fact, he's a veteran. And isn't that awesome? Yeah. Jesus is a healer. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is a healer. And we've seen the miraculous under this tent. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, he can heal your physical wounds. Your, your physical wounds and your emotional wounds just as well. And sometimes, saints, can we just be honest? The emotional wounds can be a whole lot worse than the physical wounds. If you came in with, you know, your... A uh, leg in a splint or your arm in a sling or whatever. Oh, what happened to you? Oh, are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? Let me get your chair. Let me get. 
but your wife leave you, your whole family's lying on you, you know, someone stole from you at work, they're cheating you. Why don't you have a smile on your face? You're rude, <laughs> right? We don't cut slack for people as much over the emotional wounds, and yet we will for the physical. I'm here to tell you, Jesus knows and he cares, and he wants to heal you. And I encourage you to take an inventory of your own life and realize maybe you need to be healed. Maybe you're the one who canceled somebody. How about that? <laughs> maybe you need to inventory your own self. Why are you punching everybody around you? Maybe you've been wounded. You were wounded in childhood. You were wounded through a divorce. You were wounded through a certain scenario. And now you punch everybody around you because you anticipate them punching you. So you punch them first, right? You can be healed. That same cross took our sin. It took our sickness. Took our emotional pain. Hallelujah. And it guarantees a place for us in heaven. But here's the good news. We can live abundant life right here, right now. Amen. I want you to point your, if you might be watching this on your cell phone, but if you're watching this on a screen of any kind, I want you to touch it. I want you to stretch your hands towards that screen. We're going to pray for you this morning. You can be healed, hallelujah, by the stripes of Jesus. Father, I pray everybody under the sound of my voice, no matter what it was, any kind of rejection, any kind of door that was open for the enemy, emotional pain, maybe they've been canceled, maybe they've been rejected, maybe they've been wounded, childhood molestation, all kinds of horrible sexual perverted sins to children. Father, we ask you, Lord, to go back through the crevices of our heart, God, and heal every part that hurts. Father, the things that we don't even talk about, the things, God, that we've tried to sweep under the rug. Father, I'm asking the Lord to put the spotlight of your word on that. Illuminate it, Lord, and let your people be set free and be healed in Jesus' name. Father, you're coming back for a glorious church. You're coming back for a victorious church. You're not coming back for a broken down, sick, molested church. You're coming back for a victorious church. And Father, we need to be healed so that we can preach the gospel to the poor, so that we can win the lost, so that we can see the foster system changed, Father. We're asking the Lord for your divine healing to come upon every person under the sound of my voice so we can shut the door to the enemy in Jesus' name. I bind the devil. I bind demonic spirits. I bind wounds. I bind in the name of Jesus where the enemy would come in through a fence. We bind it in Jesus' name. We claim the healing power, the balm of Gilead. Come to you right now wherever you are, in a motel room, in a hospital room, in a car, wherever it's at. The Holy Spirit meets you right where you are. And you are healed. We call you healed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer with us, would you please inbox us, connect with us some way. Let us know that you received something from the Lord today. Amen. We're just going to take a couple more minutes, and I just want to talk to John and Jenica before we close today about young people. And I'm talking teenagers. So what is your opinion of the state of youth in America? They need Jesus. They need Jesus. <laughs> yes. Largely because they're unchurched. Yeah. We have a generation, I hate to say it, but of my age, his age, who <laughs> did not take our children to church, got busy making money. Somehow, I'm talking about church people, we th thought it was more important to work four jobs and make sure our kids had a $1,500 backpack and a $2,000 cell phone and $300 tennis shoes so we didn't have time to take them to church. And now we have a generation that don't know Noah's Ark. <laughs> they don't know about Adam and Eve. So um, you got some statistics you're going to read us? Yeah, All right. we have some statistics we want to share with y'all. So um, what you were just saying, more than half of the younger generation they don't believe in God. Don't even believe in God. Don't even believe in mm -mm -mm. God. Um, mo most parents, they're focused on their kids' college instead of their kids' church. Right. Seventy-five percent of college students will give up their faith in the first year of college. Wow. Where's the line? Ninety percent of substance abuse disorders start in the teenage years. You need to say that one again. 
90 percent of substance abuse disorders, alcoholism drug addiction starts in the teenage years so is youth ministry important yes <laughs> is youth ministry easy no, no. <laughs> but i'm here to tell you at the fireplace fellowship we care about your teenagers we are determined the ones on our watch, at least we can't control them. We can't help if they don't come around. But if they come here, they're going to feel the love of God. And parents, we are here. Amen. We are here to help you. We are here to partner with you because there is a better way. What about, you know, what would it be if they learn discipleship in Awana? What if they learn about how to preach the gospel, how to witness to their neighbor in youth? And by the time they're in the now gen, they're already preaching like we see it coming out of Joseph. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. We decree that. We're, well, let's just pray one more time. I know Pastor Janet prayed over the young adults, but we just, I want to close today with praying over your families, your children. I pray today you see the value of your own kids, of your own grandkids, your neighbors. Y'all, we've got to see this generation saved. We can't, we don't have another decade to lose. This is it. We have foster care children in every state, but right here in Middle Tennessee, in this county, there will be foster care children sleeping on conference tables tonight because there's no foster home to put them in. There is no bed. The church has got to wake up. We have a whole generation of foster children who need to hear about Jesus. Amen? They need to know the love of God. What hope do they have? And who's supposed to do it? The church. The church. So parents, grandparents, you're watching today. We want you to know if you're anywhere in the radius, but you know what? There's a church near you, wherever you at. There, the body of Christ is alive and well. And so right now we're going to agree with you for your sons and daughters, your grandchildren. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every teenager, every young adult, every child, every nursery age child. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We cancel the assignment of the enemy. We thank you, Lord, that our children will fulfill their calling. We cancel the assignment of any early death in Jesus' name. They will live and decree the works of the Lord. Great is the peace of our children. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this blessed America that we live in. But, Father, we pray that our children are raised up to worship God freely. Not just because we have the rights, but because we want to, Father. Father, we decree that this generation shall be saved. Father, we thank you, Lord, for America. I thank you, Lord, for the Fireplace Fellowship. I thank you, Lord God, for every person who's watched today, for the people who've joined us in person and online. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing at this church, and we see that it is marvelous, and we call it good. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Paul's going to take us out with one more song. I just want to hit on a couple announcements, if y'all want to hop in here and help me. But we have... Um, so this is the 7th. So the 10th, we have uh, released no Wednesday night service. It will, we will be here for Kathy Crab Hannah's Backyard Bash. July 12th, that's Friday night at 7 p.m., Saturday night at 7 p.m., and then Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Get her early. Bring your lawn chairs. <laughs> There will be food. There's going to be um, Coach Quarters has donated their gourmet food truck that they take uh, on tours. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have a um, banana split bar in the heat. Do you tell me how that works? But anyways, hey, happy 4th of July, right? And we're going to have watermelon and all, just all kinds of stuff. It's going to be amazing. So that is Kathy Crab Hannah's Backyard Bash right here, 1616 Long Hollow Pike. Um, July 12th, 13th, Sunday morning, the 14th. Lawn chair outside, all right? And then the 17th, that following Wednesday night, is the Noah's Ark event that starts at 5 p.m. You can come visit the animals at 5 p.m. And we will serve dinner at 6, right? And it goes till 8. And then we have VBS. Tell us the dates one more time of VBS. The 23rd through the 26th. Ending with the Backyard Bash. On the 26th. All right. Back to school. We got all those slides up on the screen to help you stay connected with that. If you need any more information, reach out. You can find us online, all social media platforms. We're so glad that you tuned in today. We hope that you have enjoyed this time with us. We've loved being here. Thank you to our Amen Corner. Y'all have done amazing. Brother Paul, will you take us away? One more time. Oh.